Tonight, a tropical storm could form near the Philippines. And now the latest around the wide world of tropics. Tropical weather bulletin for August 21st. Well, around the world right now, we have uh, several areas to be looking at. Obviously, most notably, potential tropical cyclone 4 is just about to move inland over northern Mexico. National Hurricane Center are revising down its chances. Uh, tropical Depression 4B still active over India. National Hurricane Center have gone down to 20% at the latest advisory. Um, we've kept our orange marker on it, but that was from before their update, so I imagine our chances have gone down as well. We're also marking two areas of interest in the Eastern Atlantic to be watching out for over the next five days. In the Eastern Pacific, it's day 99 of hurricane season, and all we've still got is the remnants of Yvette, which are still holding on and doing stuff. National Hurricane Center gave it a 20% chance of regenerating earlier today. And in the Western Pacific, two areas of interest, one of them we're particularly interested in near the Philippines right now. High chance of development now it would seem, with several models on board, in fact almost all of them. So this could become our next tropical cyclone moving through either the northern Philippines or through the strait north of there. And in the Indian Ocean, 4B still identifiable as a depression with convection still blowing up and no doubt heavy rainfall occurring over a very large area of northeastern or eastern India. Let's check the satellite imagery today. You can quite clearly see 4L on the far left hand side of your screen uh, with convection still blowing up and rumbling you know it looks pretty decent when you look at it from a distance uh, but it's been lacking that center of circulation and it's been too broad to designate so it doesn't look like it's going to get its tropical cyclone status in the eastern pacific you can still see the remnants of event there on the uh, brink of enormous amounts of dry air further east another little disturbance that's blowing up there as well it hasn't been marked or picked up by any models yet but interesting nonetheless here's a look at something in the south pacific right now that i thought i'd bring your attention to some convection bubbling up there we're giving it around a 60 percent chance of possibly becoming a tropical cyclone or subtropical cyclone in the next couple of days Moving back to the Atlantic and the Eastern Pacific then, to show you some more satellite views. Here's some visible imagery of how a uh, tr uh, potential tropical cyclone 4 has developed throughout this afternoon into the evening. And as you can see there, convection is no problem, um, but we're still struggling to see the circulation there. Eastern side, not a problem, but the western side along the coast of Mexico has been struggling. Here's the Western Pacific right now, and you can clearly see how well um, this disturbance has been developing near the Philippines. Um, whether it gets circulation soon or not remains to be seen. It's been looking fairly decent. Uh, I don't think we've had any. In fact, ASCAT missed it earlier today, so we've been a little bit in the dark about its current status. Indian Ocean, you can easily see what's happened with that depression moving well inland over India, possibly even more north, north than we expected initially. Uh, further south, general disturbances blowing up. And in the southern hemisphere, you can just about make out that disturbance on the far right hand side of your screen again there to the southeast of uh, Fiji and Samoa. Um, but apart from that, nothing else going on in the tropical part of the eastern hemisphere but very impressive to see a potential system in the south pacific right now here is the remnants of yvette just about moving over some cooler sea surface temperatures now just dropping below the 26 degree isotherm uh, warmer waters along the coast of mexico 30 degrees plus same two for worth uh, 4l is but it didn't quite manage to take advantage off Cuba, 32 degrees along the coast of Florida, 30 and pushing 31 or 32 in parts of the Bahamas now as well. Very warm SSTs. Here's the Eastern Hemisphere, India there and the uh, Bay of Bengal, decent temperatures. Looking towards the Western Pacific, very warm sea surface temperatures once again. 
mostly around 15 to 25 degrees north temperatures there over 30 degrees in the Philippine Sea and where that potential cyclone is uh, very warm SSTs cooling a little bit into the South China Sea when it gets in there um, the jury's out on whether it will actually impact or make landfall I should say on Luzon or not some models saying yes others saying no but we'll get to that in a moment and here is the sea surface temperature anomaly is actually rather near to average now in the tropical Pacific Western Pacific but still very much above average further north in the extra tropical zones La Nina effect still well in play there and possibly exerting itself a little bit more back to the east and here's the oceanic heat content baking in the Caribbean Sea extending through the loop current and also in parts of the western uh, Gulf of Mexico there as well Western Pacific obviously very warm as you'd expect Eastern Pacific still struggling quite a bit and despite all of that the Eastern Pacific has outstripped both the Atlantic and the Western Pacific by quite a margin so far let's check these computer models then so first of all we're looking at the Atlantic which is showing the, the potential for those systems developing um, and as you can see marking two different systems for the Eastern Atlantic for potential development GFS wants both of them to become tropical cyclones um, I'm not sure whether that is possible uh, but I think one of them becoming a tropical cyclone is certainly on the cards when we look towards that long range uh, but it is towards the end of that five day period so uh, I would have a little bit of caution still on that Western Pacific still showing both of those systems nicely the GFS though takes the prominent system further south right through the middle of Luzon although other models still taking it further north most notably the CMC which is still favoring a earlier recurve and gliding along the coast of Taiwan uh, in the next five days and that would be a stronger storm if it did that as well uh, a southerly solution is a weaker solution that's for sure and this is the rain charts if it was to follow that GFS forecast and take its rain with it through the uh, northern Philippine islands through Luzon and see extremely high amounts of rain possible uh, along that red and pink line that denotes over 15 inches of rain 18 there looks like a maximum of 21 actually uh, and that would equate in millimeters to uh, quite a lot I'm trying to figure out how much that actually is I think that's about 800 millimeters of rain there uh, so quite an extraordinary amount of rain or at least uh, 600 but extremely high amounts if that was to occur in longer range this is what the Atlantic is showing now those two disturbances let's see how they develop so the one on the western side there uh, weakens a little bit the one on the right hand side is much broader and develops into that tropical storm and look north another system there moving off the US East Coast that might have a chance to transition into a tropical cyclone as well but that is quite long range towards the end of the 10 day period but all signs are showing that the Atlantic is about to wake up. Now we had a little bit of a false start with 4L, but it could be on the way that we'll see something quite significant. That's all the important stuff out of the way. You can scan the barcode and take a look at the Force 13 store with all of our merch products, as well as our animations, where you can request individual and full season animations on demand there. And we've still got us still waiting for Hone t-shirts entering the silly range and this is quite silly brace yourselves in the Atlantic we've got two hurricanes that decide that they're going to form one of them moves through southern Florida as a substantial category one and the other one is a powerful category three hurricane probably and it's moving up towards the US East Coast Southeast United States that first hurricane goes on to strike Louisiana as a substantial hurricane as well and there's another storm that forms in the Eastern Pacific. Anyway, enough of that madness. Let's look at the much quieter Indian Ocean. Now you notice the absence of long range Western Pacific models here because it's developing absolutely nothing in the Western Pacific through day 16 for, on the GFS model. In the Indian Ocean there, you saw a little bit of a chance of a tropical storm in the Arabian Sea. It does something quite similar in the southern hemisphere as well in the south indian ocean but not looking as good 
but that this literally is just to pass the time, I don't think any of that is going to transpire. Well then, on this day in 2007, uh, even though there was only one storm active, it was a massive one. Hurricane Dean was making its Category 5 landfall on the Yucatan Peninsula. You can see the eye of the storm there quite clearly just after landfall. Very ominous picture there, just north of the border with Belize on the southern part of the Mexican area of the Yucatan. An extremely powerful storm, it peaked twice as a Category 5 did Dean and then moved on through towards the Bay of Campeche. Well, 15 years later, we're back again. The next name on the Atlantic naming list is still Danielle in the Eastern Pacific. Next up is Javier. In the Central Pacific, the next name is Hone. In the Western Pacific, we're still waiting for Ma'on. In the North Indian Ocean, the next name is Citrang. And we're still at 47 storms for the year so far, the average being 92 for the whole year. In the Southern Hemisphere, next up is Darien. In the Southwest Indian Ocean, Ashley starts us off this year. And in the South Pacific, the next name is Harley. That's all for tonight's Tropical Weather Bulletin. We'll be back again tomorrow night. <laughs>